And this is today's plan. I think this is a one hour presentation. Is this okay? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. So I first explain evolutionary computation, then multi objective optimization, and evolutionary multi objective optimization. And the main part is hot topics in evolutionary multi objective optimization research field. And I finally I will show some useful information on this research field. When you optimize some program, you usually use, I think they usually use the local search, point-based search. For example, the learning of neural network is local search. From initial solution, usually we randomly generate initial solution. Then you have a final solution. Final solution is local solution. So sometimes local solution is not good. Sometimes local solution is relatively good. In order to improve this simple local search, one idea is iterated local search. When solution arrive at the local solution, then we can distance the local search. That is, we have a new initial solution, then perform local search. And then we distart again from this point and perform local search. By this manner, after several iterations of local search, we may be able to find a good solution. This is the idea of iterated local search. In order to escape from local solution, there are a lot of ideas have already been proposed. One well-known idea is tab search. This is also point-based search. The idea of tab search is to escape from the from a local solution using tab list. Tab list is used to prevent to go back the same local solution. If we arrive at this local solution, we escape from this solution going this way. Tab list play a role to prevent the search coming back to this point. In this manner, Tab search can escape from local solution. Another well-known idea is simulated annealing. Simulated annealing, we use temperature when temperature is very high. Search point has large energy, then search point can move around almost freely, almost randomly. Then temperature gradually decreases. Then oh, something bad. I <laughs> receive a lot of message. Okay, I try to improve my voice. Is this better? Any change? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Okay. I. You just now? And in the simulated learning, we use the concept of temperature. When temperature is very large, this point has a large energy. So this point can move around freely. Then temperature is gradually decreased. Then when temperature is low, the search point has very low energy. So search point can simply go back, only, only go down to better solution. Finally, we have a good solution. This is the idea of simulated learning. Evolution competition is totally different. The main difference is in evolution competition, we have Many solutions, multiple initial solutions. First, these 
many solutions are randomly generated. Then, among these many solutions, we select only better solutions. And using these better solutions, we create new solutions. Then, from these solutions, we can focus on better solutions. Again, from better solutions, we can generate new solutions. In this manner, using many solutions, we can gradually improve the solution set. This is the basic idea of evolutionary computation. And then, let's move to multi-objective optimization. Usually, we have single objective, and our optimization programs are single objective problems. Here, we have only single objective to maximize function fx. However, in the real situation, we have a lot of different objectives. Even if you use only single objective, your program may have a lot of different objectives. So our problem is usually multi objective program. Here, if we have two objectives, this is two objective program. If we have three objectives, this is three objective programs. If we have four objectives, this is four objective program. And this slide shows the popularity of multi objective optimization research. The horizontal axis is the publication year, and vertical axis shows the number of published papers. So each bar, each blue bar, the height of each blue bar shows the number of papers published in each year. We focus on multi objective in the paper title. So from this figure, we can see that the number of papers on multi objective increasing every year. Stable growth since around here. In the last 20 years, the number of published papers on multi objective is clearly growing. And last year is here. So still we are, we, uh, the area of multi objective optimization is growing. Rapidly. And why we have so many multi object papers? The answer is here. Almost all real world problems have multiple objectives. This is the reason why multi object research is so popular. Let us consider the design of an intelligent system. I think. All of you are working on the design on the design of an intelligent system. Your area may be totally different. For example, your area can be pattern classification. Your area can be control. Your area is speech understanding. Your area can be natural language understanding. In, but all areas, areas, your task, your job is to design an intelligent system. In this case, Main objective is the maximization of its performance. Performance maximization is usually main objective. Even for the design of cars, design of ships, or design of bridge, design of buildings. Even in those cases, the main objective is the performance maximization. However, we need to consider a variety of, of other objectives such as cost minimization, energy consumption minimization, compressive minimization. We have a lot of other objectives. So almost all the other programs have multiple objectives. Thus, much objective research is very popular. Here we show one example. Neural architecture search, the design of neural network. The search of the best architecture of neural network is a very hot topic recently. And we usually use the error minimization. However, in some field, complexity minimization is also very important. If we try to minimize the error of neural networks, then we have a very complicated neural networks, like a deep learning neural networks hundreds of layers and millions of parameters, millions of connecting connection weights. Those extremely complicated neural networks have very high accuracy, 
very small errors, but complexity is huge. So we need a lot of energies. We need a lot of memories. So we want to, at the same time, we want to minimize the complexity. If we try to minimize the complexity, neural network is very simple. However, this neural network is not so accurate. It is clear that there is a trade-off boundary here. It is impossible to have a very simple neural network with extremely high accuracy. This ideal solution is infeasible because of the trade-off surface between complexity and error. But the core concept of multi object recognition is the trade-off surface, this pink line. Even when we use a fixed neural network architecture, we have still some other trade-off. For example, error and competition time. By increasing the competition time, we can decrease the error, but we need uh, more cost. Our data set size is another problem. Cost can be viewed as a data set size. By using a large data set, we may be able to find a better neural network. But in order to collect large data sets, we need more money, more cost. And also, we need more longer competition time. So there is clear trade-off surface between error and data set size. Also, for pattern classification programs, to try to minimize the error on class one patterns has some conflict with the minimization of errors on another pattern. So still we have a clear trade-off. Now, using this very simple two-objective maximization problem, I'd like to explain the basic idea of multi-objective operation. Here, we have two objectives to be maximized. One is maximization of fx to maximize f1x. This one is the one objective. And the other is maximization of f2x. This is the second objective. When we have two solutions, A and B, in this objective space, it is very clear that A is better solution than solution B. This is because A is better than B for F1x. A is better than B for F2x. So for maximization problem of F1x and F2x, A is clearly is better than B. This is a very simple idea for two objective maximization problem. A is better than B in this case. In this situation, we say that A dominates B. Dominate is a special English word, which is used in multi objective operation. And in this case, B is dominated by A. B is dominated by A. A dominates A. And A is better than B. All of them have the same meaning. And it's very clear. We can easily compare two solutions using two objectives in this case. However, if we have solution C here, in this case, we cannot say which is better between A and C. We cannot say which is bet bet better between A and C because C is better for F1, but A is better for F2. In this situation, we don't know which is better. So we say that A and C are non-dominated with each other. We cannot say which is better. Now, using that non-dominated concept, we can define the most important optimality concept, Pareto Optimal Solutions, Pareto Optimality. A Pareto Optimal Solution is a solution that is not dominated by any other solutions. This is the definition of the Pareto Optimal Solution. Here, let's also assume that our two objective maximum programs have these feasible solutions. All of them are feasible solutions. And we have no other solutions. 
All solutions are shown in this figure. This is the assumption. Then, all pink points are Pareto optimal solution because they are not dominated by any other solutions. And other solution, for example, inside solution, this one, this solution is dominated by this pink solution. This solution is dominated by this pink solution. And this, pink, this solution is dominated by these two pink solutions. And inside solutions are dominated by many other solutions. This one is dominated by almost all solutions. So in this figure, pink solutions are not dominated by any other solution. Thus, pink solutions are Pareto optimal solution. This is a concept of solutions in multi objective optimization. Now, let us move to evolutionary multi objective optimization. The goal of evolutionary multi objective optimization is to find all Pareto optimal solutions. This is a very simple explanation. In this figure, we want to try to find all of these pink solutions. And this is the goal of evolutionary multi objective optimization. This is only when the number of Pareto plan solutions is small. For example, 100. When the number of Pareto plan solutions is large or infinite. For example, in the case of continuous multi objective optimization, we have an infinitely large number of solutions on this Pareto front, on this trade off surface. Then, in this case, the goal of evolutionary multi objective optimization is to find a solution set which will approximate the entire Pareto front. So, if the problem is continuous, we have a trade off surface. Then, the goal of evolutionary multi objective optimization is to find a set of solutions which, in order to approximate this entire Pareto front, this is the goal of evolutionary multi objective optimization. In the literature, I think that you can find two approaches to multi objective optimization. One is evolutionary multi objective optimization approach. This is the main topic of this talk. The main characteristic feature of this approach is the use of additional information after optimization. The this approach is the order is first optimization, then decision making. First, a number of Pareto plan solutions are found and presented to the decision maker. Then a final solution is selected by the decision maker. This is an evolutionary multi objective optimization based approach to multi objective optimization. First, these solutions are found. Then, after that, the decision maker is supposed to select one final solution. Here, this approach is explained. In a step, in a first step, we try to find a large number of solutions along the palette front. This figure shows that the multi objective evolution. Green point are solutions in the 20th generation. Initial solution is much worse around here. Then population moved towards this direction for maximization problem, to objective maximization problem. Then at the 20th generation, we have this green point. Then, after that, after 50th generation, we have this yellow point. Yellow points are population at the 50th generation. Then, finally, after 2000 generation updates, we have this red point. This is the first step based on evolutionary multi objective optimization. After that, all these red points are shown to the decision maker. Then, single solution is selected. This is the uh, evolutionary multi objective optimization based approach. Another approach is use of additional information before optimization. First, we ask decision maker to show your preference. First, multiple objectives are combined into a single objective function using additional information from the decision maker. So first step is to create a single objective function. Here we show weighted sum approach one, as a, one example. Then after that, objective function is optimized to find a single final solution. 
This is a very old approach. However, this is the most frequently used approach even now. The first step, in the case of two objectives, two objectives are combined into a single objective function. In this case, we use weighted sum approach and weight are rate 0 0.5 and 0 0.5, the same weight. Then this function, this combined function is optimized. So if we, we use uh, evolutionary computation, after 20th generation, we have this green point. After 50th generation, we have this yellow point. Then we have a single point, this red point. This is because we have a single objective optimization. The final solution is only a single solution. This is a traditional MCDM approach. However, this is the most frequently used approach, even now. This slide compares two approaches. EMO approach is characterized by a large number of final solutions. And MCDM approach is characterized by a single solution. The question is, which is better? In the M approach, we have a large number of solutions along the parietron. In the MCDM approach, we have only a single solution. So advantage of M approach. What's the advantage of M approach? Advantage is explained by this sentence. The palette front is shown to the decision maker as a result of a single run of an M algorithm. So decision maker can understand the trade-off relation in M approach. However, in the traditional approach, decision maker receives only a single solution. Decision maker has no choices. He or she will receive only a single solution as a result of optimization. However, in M approach, decision maker receives a large number of solutions and he or she can choose one solution. So decision maker has a lot of choices. This is the main advantage. So in M approach, first, a large number of solutions are shown. And this should make understand the trade-off relation between two objectives. Then, based on this trade-off relation, one solution is selected. Now, I'd like to explain some traditional methods, MCDM method, and I'd like to explain their disadvantages. First, Weighted sum approach. This is most frequently used approach. I think that most of you are using this approach in order to handle multiple objectives. Multiple objectives are usually combined into a single objective function using weight for each objective. Typically, this weight is sum. And then, so first we need to specialize the weight vector. Then this objective function is maximized. So the optimal solution is here. Maximization of this weight vector, this solution along this weight vector. Some researchers misunderstand that based on weighted sum. We have this solution, the intersecting point between weight vector and palatron. But the reality is that the solution is here. This may be okay in this case, but in this situation, the palatron is just slightly concave shape, almost line, slightly concave. In this situation, the weight vector is about 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And decision maker want to have a solution here, around here. Maximization of F1 and maximization of F2. And this is a very nice compromise solution. Both are good. 
However, if you use weight weight sum approach, your solution is here with this weight vector. So in order to find solution around here, you may change the weight vector. They, you can change the weight vector. Now your solution is here. This simple example shows that slight change in weight vector can lead to a large jump from here to here. And no solution around the center of the parallel front can be found. For this weight vector, we have this point. Then, slightly changing the weight vector, we have this point. So, we cannot find a solution around the center region. This is a large disadvantage of weighty sum approach. Of course, we have some other approaches. One is the use of constraint condition for two objective problems. We can use constraint condition for one objective. And we can use the other objective as a objective function to be maximized. The constant is alpha here. If alpha is this one, the physical region is this shaded region. This blue region is a feasible region. And based on this feasible region, to maximize F2 means that we have this optimal solution. So we can obtain a solution around the center. This is nice. So solution in the concave part can be found using constraint condition-based method, like this one. One difficulty is that, as shown in this figure, slight change in the constraint condition, alpha, can significantly improve or degrade the solution. In this situation, slight change from here to here, we have a large improvement for F2. We have a large improvement in F2 in this example. with very small deterioration of the first objective. So this specification is not good specification because slightly changing the value, we have a large improvement. Another approach is the use of a target solution. Decision maker is asked to specify your target. Where is your target? If it's a target here, optimal solution is here. Because this is a trade-off trade -off boundary, and we have no solution in this side. All solutions in this side. So the best solutions closest to the target is this one. So we can use the minimization of the distance from the target. Then we have optimal solution. This is also looks nice. And if the target is here, optimal solution is here. If the target is here, optimal solution is here. If compared with, between these two targets, from the initial, from the first one to the second one, second one is much better because first objective improvement is huge. By decreasing a, a small decrease of F2, this very small decrease, we have a large gain. So this target is better. So this is not a good specification. This is clear based on this trade-off surface. If we know the parallel front, we can easily say that this is not a good specification. So if we know the shape of the parallel front, we will try to find solution around here. Not around here. But the difficulty in all MCDM approach is that we have to specify the target using no information about the shape of the parallel front. Without knowing this shape, we need to specify a target. Well, we need to specify the constraint condition. We need to specify the weight. The difficulty is to give a 
プリファネンス。before knowing this shape, p a r e t r o n shape. In the case of M approach, first we can show all solutions along the p a r e t r o n So decision maker can understand the shape of the p a r e t r o n Then decision maker can choose the final solution. This is the main advantage of M approach. That is, we can show a large number of solutions along the p a r e t r o n And decision maker can choose the best solution among them. Now, I'd like to move to the main part of evolutionary multi object optimization. Since many solutions are presented to the decision maker, the important issue in the algorithm is how to search for well distributed solutions set along the palette front. How to, to, how to search for these red points? This is the main issue. As the one important step to search for well distributed solutions, first step is how to evaluate each solution. In the case of single objective optimization, solution comparison is very easy. So we can say which is better solution and which is worse solution. In this figure, we have two solutions, green solutions and pink solutions. In this case, it is very easy to say that green solution is better solution than pink solution for maximization program. Thus, fitness evaluation of each solution is very easy in evolutionary competition. We can say that, oh, this is good solution and this is bad solution. And we can give a large fitness to this one and we can give a small fitness to this one. However, In multi objective optimization, each solution should be evaluated by multiple objectives. Thus, the fitness evaluation of each solution is not easy, and the comparison between solutions is not easy. The question is how to evaluate the fitness value of each solution, how to compare different solutions. Not so easy. In the case of single objective situation, it's very easy to compare. So, we can easily use evolutionary computation or any such method to single object optimization. However, in the case of multi object optimization, comparison of solutions is not easy. And the main problem is how to evaluate each solution. For this program, we usually use Pareto dominance relation. The idea is shown in this figure. High fitness values are assigned to non dominated solutions, and low fitness values are assigned to dominated solutions. So, in this figure, high fitness values are assigned to these three green solutions, and low fitness values are assigned to these two red solutions. And the fitness value of these three black solutions are in the middle. Using this idea, we can push the population towards the palette front because new solutions are generated from high fitness solutions. New is green solution. Then uh, high fitness values are assigned to non dominant solution. By iterating this procedure, we can push the population towards this direction. So the use of palette dominance is to push the population towards the palette front. However, simply using a palette dominance, high fitness values are assigned to this non dominant solution. We can push the population to a this direction. However, final solution is only center of the palette front. It's almost impossible to find a wide variety of solutions, especially in this pink region. It is almost impossible to find the solutions in these pink regions by simply pushing the population to a this direction. So, we need、uh, some other mechanism. This is called crowding or fitness sharing. The idea is to assign lower fitness values to solutions in the crowded regions and higher fitness values to solutions in isolated solutions, not non crowded regions. So, in this figure, all of these seven 
solutions are non-dominated. So in a pari dominance relation, all of them have high fitness values, but among them, lower fitness values are assigned to solution in the middle because they are in a crowded region. And higher fitness values are assigned to these two isolated solutions. This is to increase the diversity. Since these two solutions have higher fitness values, many children are generated around these two solutions. Then we can increase the diversity of sol solutions. So crowding is to increase the diversity of solutions. Now we have two different mechanisms to push the population towards the parent front and to increase the diversity of solutions. The point of MO algorithm design is how to maintain a good balance between these two mechanisms. If we strongly push the population towards the parent front, we can quickly find a good solution only around the center of the parent front. If we have a very strong diversification mechanism, we have a solution with large diversity, but those solutions are not close to the parent front. So the point of M algorithm design is to have a good balance between these two mechanisms. Now, I'd like to explain some modifications of this very simple mechanism. One is elitist framework. Based on this simple framework, convergence ability is not always strong. I'd like to explain using this figure the traditional non elitist framework. This is a very early algorithm. From current population, we have next population. Next population is the same as children. And next population is the same as children. In this manner, final population is the final solution. Even if we have a very good solution in the current population, they cannot survive to the next population. This is the main mechanism of very simple generational model. Next population is the same as offspring population. So this is not so good. Then currently, almost all MO algorithms are based on elitist framework. If we have a good solution in the current population, current population sol solutions in the current population can survive to the next population. The next population is created from current population and offspring population by selecting good solutions. In this manner, we can improve the convergence ability of the original very standard generational model. And another difficulty is solution distribution. Solution distribution is not always good. In the standard mechanism, we assign higher fitness value to isolated solutions and lower fitness value to crowded solution. This mechanism can increase the diversity. However, no good mechanism to obtain uniformly distributed solution set. So if we simply use a crowding mechanism, we have this type of solution. Distribution is good, but the solution uniformity is not good. So recently, we use direction vectors. Such directions are uniformly specified in the objective space. Then we can obtain uniformly distributed solutions. In the objective space, we use uniformly distributed such directions, and one solution is, select, is obtained for each such direction. As a result, we can obtain uniformly distributed solutions. This is much better than the uh, simple use of crowding distance. Another idea is the use of 
some indicator. Usually we use hypervolume. Hypervolume is a volume do of the region dominated by solution set. In this figure, we have three green points. We assume that a population size is three. Then by maximize the hypervolume, we can improve the convergence towards the palette front. Also, we can increase the diversity of solution set. So now, multi optical optimization can be viewed as a hypervolume maximization. By using hypervolume maximization, we can obtain this type of distribution. We have we can observe some regularity, not perfectly uniform, but we can obtain us we can observe some regularity. We have a nice distribution along the boundary, and also we have a solution inside. This distribution may be better than the original solution set. Now, with, I'd like to move to the main part, hot topics in MO field. And I divided hot topics into two parts. First part is MO algorithm improvement to solve difficult multi objective problems. And in the first part, the first topic is many objective optimization. Usually in the MO community, we solve two objective problems and three objective problems. Most of MO algorithms are designed, have been designed for two objective and three objective problems. Those algorithms have some difficulty when they solve many objective problems. It's very intuitive that by increasing the number of objective, the problem will become very difficult. If you have only two objectives, the problem may be easier than other problem with 20 objectives. The difficulty is here. When an optimization program has many objectives, for example, 10 objectives or 20 objectives, almost all solutions in the current population are non-dominated. You can easily imagine the situation to compare different solutions based on 10 objectives. Each solution has 10 different criteria. For example, if you compare different people, we have a lot of measures, height, weight, or salary. You can list 10 different criteria. Then, if you compare two different people, usually they are non dominated. If you increase the age, younger is better, but age is usually proportional to the salary. So we have a clear conflict. In this manner, if you list an objective, you can easily imagine that almost all solutions are non-dominated. So we cannot use parallel dominance as a solution evaluation criterion. And we have a huge number of good solutions. We have a huge number of non-dominated solutions. This figure shows a simulation result. This axis shows the number of generations. So the first generation, 10th generation, 100th generation, 1,000th generation, 10,000th generation. And population size is 275. So during 10,000 generations, we can evaluate 2.7 million solutions. Among those 2.7 million solutions, 84.6% solutions are non-dominated. So about 2 million solutions are non-dominated for an objective test program. So we have 2 million 
non-dominant solutions. And we cannot say which is better among those two million solutions. This situation is very difficult. Sir, I think your video is paused. You hear me? Yes, sir. Now we can see you and hear you. Oh, sorry. That's the connection. Yeah, internet connection is disconnected. <laughs> okay, I just start again. And this slide show decent outstanding paper out of a typical transaction evolutionary computation in the last five years. The last year's award is given to a paper on deep neural networks. This is a very hot topic. But in the previous two years, outstanding paper awards were given to many objective papers. So this list clearly shows the popularity of Multi objective, especially many objective operation. And next, sir, I think you are on mute. We can't hear you, sir. Maybe he will try to join again. He join. Participants are requested to write your questions in the chat box. So that at the end we can ask it to sir. And please don't forget to uh, fill your attendance form, which is a feedback form and your certificates will be issued based on the responses that we get in this feedback form. So please don't forget to fill the form. Sir is back. Can see my slide? Yes, uh, we can see your. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. I, I 
directors you start again i think that's from here large scale yes. program large scale means that the number of decision variable is large standard multi object test program have only 10 to 20 decision variables and standard m algorithms have been designed for those test program with only 10 to 20 decision variables thus some special techniques are needed for efficient research to handle large scale program with huge number of decision variables this is a very interesting research topic in the field of mo and next topic is expensive program in this type of programs solution evaluation is very expensive and are time consuming so as a result we can examine only a small number of solutions for example 500 solutions in order to solve this type of problem we usually use surrogate based algorithm this is also related to the second type of topics evolution match objective and machine learning combination of mo and machine learning the basic idea is to of a surrogate based algorithm is to approximate each objective function by a machine learning technique for example neural network using a small number of examining solutions here we have an unknown objective function this is unknown and we have small number of examining solution using small number of examining solution we create we create a model approximation model of the true object function then we find uh, some good region promising region then we can examine some other solutions then we improve the model this is the idea of surrogate based optimization for expensive multi objective problem this is also a very hot topic and another topic is weight vector adaptation as i have already explained by using uniformly distributed solutions we can obtain a very nice solution set as shown in the figure in the middle however using uniformly distributed vectors is not good when the parallel shape is totally different from the weight vector distribution weight vector distribution is triangular However, the parallel front in this case, in the right hand side case, the parallel front is inverted triangular. Thus, we cannot obtain a well distributed solution. We cannot obtain solution around the corner, and we have a large number of solutions around here and the boundary in the middle, and not so many solutions around the center so weight vector distribution should be adjusted to handle a wide variety of different problem for example in this case this is a palette front of test program totally different from this triangular shape so it is very clear that weight vector adaptation is needed in order to find a well distributed solution for this test program if we simply use this triangular shape, obtain solution is shown in this figure. Red point, red point, red point are obtained from these weight vectors. And all these small black points, all of these small black points on the line, all of them are obtained from other weight vectors. So many solutions are on this line, and no, so only one solution around the top of this palette front, and distribution is inside this region is not good. So this figure clearly shows the necessity of weight vector adaptation.
Another hot topic is the handling of constraint condition. Traditionally, multi objective algorithms have been designed for optimization problem with no constraint condition or with a simple uh, upper bound and the lower bound for each decision variable. So that if we use, uh, if we ignore the, these constraint conditions, palette front is totally different from the true palette front. In this figure around region C, that we have a unconstrained palette front. This is a palette front for objective functions. However, due to the constraint conditions, the true palette front is totally different from unconstrained palette front. If we simply use the M algorithm, by ignoring constant condition, we have a solution around here, C. So the, the challenge is to how to efficiently use Sir, we cannot hear you. You cannot. Now we can hear. Okay. It seems that something. Right. You can hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, so that in a constraint optimization problem, the important issue is how to utilize infeasible solutions for efficient search. Another is multimodal problem. The definition of multi problem is here. Each point on the palette front corresponds to different palette optimal solutions. This is a palette front, this red curve a palette front. And then solution set solution A is here. This is a one. Again, sir, uh, you are on mute. We cannot hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, now we can hear. OK, uh, please wait a moment. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. So the March model, this is a March model, March objective optimization problem. The definition is that each point on the parallel front corresponds to different solutions in the decision space. So different solutions map to the same point. For example, in a neural network design, different structure, different architecture can have the same accuracy and also can have the same number of weight, connection weight. Different combination shows the same number of connection with and also the same accuracy. In this case, our problem is to find 
different neural network structures correspond to the same point on the platform. This is a multimodal optimization. And another po hot point is utilization of stored solutions. I have already explained that the current evolution computation algorithm is this structure. From current population, we generate new offspring, children. Then from current population and children, we select the next population. And then from the next population, we create new solution, children. Then from this population and offspring population, we choose the next population. In this manner, we have a good final population. It's a, this is a basic idea of evolutionary marriage object optimization. However, this final population is not the best subset of all the examined solutions. Because the selection is performed locally from two populations and select one population, and two from two populations to select one population. If we can select the best subset from all the examined solutions, this final solution set is clearly better than the final population. This is the idea of using external unbounded archive. Using this framework, we can improve the current MO algorithm. This is one new direction. And this, I, this framework can be used for the next hot topic, combination of evolutionary optimization and machine learning. Because we have a lot of solutions here. Those solutions can be used as training data in machine learning techniques. As I have already explained, during the search, we can obtain, in this case, 2 million non dominant solutions. And using those 2 non million non dominant solutions, we can select the best subset. The best subset is clearly better than the final population. This is the idea of using the unbounded external archive to store all the examined solutions and select the best subset. And the, those stored solutions can be used for improving the improving the MO algorithms. And another hot topic is the use of decision makers' preference. In the basic MO approach is to find a, a large number of large number of solutions along the palette front. However, if we can utilize decision maker's preference. If decision maker prefer decision maker want to have good solution for F1, then we can adjust the search toward this direction to find to focus on this some special region. We call that the region of interest. We can bias the search towards some special region. This is the idea of preference incorporation in M algorithm. And another hot topic is M algorithm design for DRL programs. Here I show three examples of DRL programs, palette front of DRL programs. Palette front of DRL programs are very complicated. Totally different from standard test program. Almost all current MO algorithms have been designed for standard test program. Those algorithms work very well on standard test program. However, they have some difficulty when they handle the real problem with complicated palette front. This figure shows the result of MO algorithm comparison. If we use standard test form, detail Z, and vertical axis shows a rank. Rank one is the best. Rank 10 is the worst. We examine, we compare 10 different MO algorithms. When we use DTLZ test form, this is a very standard test form, the worst algorithm is algorithm one, and this is two, and algorithm seven. 
space EA. If we use those standard test program, number one algorithm, number seven algorithm is the worst. However, if we apply the same 10 algorithms to real world programs, seven is very good and one is not bad. So totally different comparison results are obtained. This means that currently available M algorithms are designed for standard test program and those algorithms is not always work well for the real world program. So we need to design new algorithms which work well on the real world program. This is an interesting dissertation. Now I'd like to move to the second category of hot topics, evolution of objection and machine learning, hybridization of these two very interesting areas. One is the use of surrogate model. I have already explained Machine learning can be used to approximate the mapping from decision space to objective space, approximate the objective function. And using this approximated function, we can apply MO algorithm. So instead of using true objective function, we can use approximate objective function to find a wide variety of solutions. This is to decrease the cost for evaluating a large number of solutions in a real world application. In a real world application, it is time consuming or, and or need a lot of money to evaluate even for a single solution. So in order to decrease the cost, we can use a model instead of using a real true objective function. This is the idea of surrogate model where machine learning techniques are used. Then the second direction is the same as the use, uh, previous one the, in the first category, use of the external archive. Here, all exam solutions are stored here. So this archive stored solutions can be used to generate good new solutions, can be used to select next population. Those are created the machine learning programs to utilize store solution to generate new solutions, to utilize a store solution to select good next population. Also, subset selection. Select, selection of, for example, 100 solutions from 1 million solutions. This is, is a very interesting research topic. And then, efficient new solution creation. This is a part of the previous one. When we have G solution, G3 led solutions in the objective space, it is very likely that in the future we will have a solution in the pink region. If we examine G3 solution in the decision space, if the three solutions like this one, it is a good, good idea to generate new solution in this pink region in the decision space. This is the idea of efficient new solution creation based on stored solutions. Another uh, direction is the pallet front modeling. In a standard M approach, we show a number of solutions to the decision maker. In this figure, we show this pink solution to the decision maker and decision maker select a single solution from this pink solution. But in the palette front modeling approach, first we create a palette front model as shown by this green curve. Then decision maker can choose any point on this green curve. Then decision maker selected point is mapped to the decision space. So we obtain solution using inverse model from palette front to decision space. So the inner standard M approach, one of the obtained solution is selected. One of the obtained solution is selected, but in the palette front modeling approach, any point can be selected on this curve. This curve is modeled by machine learning technique. 
and using the inverse model, we can generate final solution. This is a very interesting research direction. And now I'd like to move the last part as a useful information on EMO. We have these three well-known websites where you can easily use MO algorithms and test programs. Many MO algorithms and many test programs are available in these three sites. These three sites are for different users. JMetal is for Java users. PlatEMO is for MATLAB users. And PyMO is for Python users. You can easily compare and modify M algorithm using test program and performance indicator in this site. In this site, have a test program and also performance indicators. So you can easily compare your algorithm with many other algorithms. If you have a nice idea and you create a new algorithm, you can easily evaluate your algorithm in this site. This is a very useful site, and many M researchers currently using one of these three sites. And this is the information about conference. We have specialized conference. This is only for MO researchers. International conference on evolutionary multi-criterion optimization, MO conference, every two years. Two years ago, I was a general chair, and we had a conference in Shenzhen, China. And this year, the MO conference was last month in March in Leiden, Netherlands. And in other conference on evolutionary computation, for example, in the Gecko conference, in the Gecko conference, we have emo track and some related tutorials. And another large conference in evolutionary computation is CC, ITRP CC. In ITRP CC, we usually have some special sessions and tutorials. Also, PPNS, it is the European conference on evolutionary computation. We have many emo papers. And next year, ITRP Congress on Evolutionary Competition. This is a com ITRP Conference on Evolutionary Competition. We'll be in Japan together with Neural Network Conference and Fuzzy System Conference. Next year, we have we will have about 2,000 presentations in this conference. I'm currently the general chair of this conference and conference is in yokohama yokohama is so this is a conference site this is a conference center and nearest hotel is here Interna intercontinental yokohama and yokohama is here very close to tokyo about 30 minutes by standard train if you use high speed train tokyo and yokohama is only 10 minutes high speed train ride and Haneda International Airport is the largest international airport in Japan. Many direct flights from all over the world. And you also can find the Mickey Mouse here. And now I'd like to conclude this presentation. Evolutionary multi object estimation, EMO, is a rapidly growing research field, still growing every year. With a number of interesting research topics I have, I have already explained. That's it. MO field is still a young research field and good research field for young researchers. And MO has a wide variety of application areas. This is because almost all operation problems have conflicting objectives. Even if you are using single objective algorithm for your problem, your problem may have more than one objective, at least two conflicting objectives. Okay, that's all my presence. Thank you very much. And I'm very sorry for my late joining this meeting and also some internet program during my talk. That's all, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, now I request your uh, participants, uh, do you have any query questions? All participants are requested to ask some questions. 
till uh, participants ask uh, i was amazed by the presentation sir uh, we would request you to share your presentation powerpoint presentation with us uh, the most important thing which i noted is uh, your rigorous review in depth review of all the publications uh, on optimization and these hot topics uh, i believe are uh, outcome of your deepest research in the field sir i have uh, a question rather a doubt which i would like to uh, ask on behalf of all the participants when we uh, when we utter the words uh, computational intelligence everyone thinks about computational domains or only artificial intelligence or computer science related problems but what are the reasons uh, uh, why other interdisciplinary experts are not uh, much in this field or or uh, how we can uh, create this belief in people's mind that computational intelligence is not only about computer science domain but it spans over all the multidisciplinary uh, real life problems also so uh, what are different multidisciplinary problems you have come uh, come across uh, during your tenure of research thank you very much it's a nice question and that's a very difficult question to answer i i have several friends who are working on uh, their world program industry they are working with company and when they show better solutions than the current solution company guys are very happy and they believe the power of computational intelligence for example the marriage object evolutionary marriage object optimization but before that they don't they never think about the using the computational intelligence techniques they have their original traditional domain their domain techniques they use traditional techniques and they solve their problem every day and they have some current solution if you show some better solutions than their current solution i think that they believe the power of your approach but i don't know how to start that collaboration that part is very difficult when company guy approached to me i'm happy to do that but it's very difficult to find for me to companies who have difficult problems and for those programs computational intelligence techniques are very useful but i think that the popularity of computational intelligence techniques especially the optimization technique gradually in, is gradually increasing i had a lot of real world application of evolutionary marriage objective optimization so if I compare with 10 years ago or 20 years ago, currently the, I think the popularity of computational intelligence is gradually increasing. So but the important thing is to clearly show that the better solutions are, can be obtained by their own current solution. I'm not sure that I can answer your question, but I try to do my best. <laughs> to answer you a very difficult question. Uh, you are on mute. How we address multi-objective in deep learning, like CNN and RNN? Sorry? how we address multi objective functions maybe she is uh, in deep learning uh, algorithms like cnn and rnn hey jaswini you can also ask by unmuting yourself oh. i i'm not sure that is a very general question or a very specific question for this program we have a uh, first, we need to find this pink point. And machine learning technique is to use 
to model this point. And then since we have a, a, a several point, we can use any machine learning techniques. Then we can obtain a, this surface. And in the case of In the case of surrogate optimization, again, we have uh, several examined solution. For each point, we have input vector x and also output value fi. Then we can model each objective function. For, so in this case, we need m different models. And each model is used to approximate each objective function. We need a, a point. Those points are used to approximate the function fi. In this manner, we can use a machine learning method, for example, neural network, to approximate each objective. So now we can use those neural networks instead of evaluating each objective function value. Assumption is that the evaluation of each objective function value is expensive or time consuming. However, once we have a trained model, calculation of the output is very fast. So using those models, we can use a standard neural standard marriage objective evolutionary algorithm method. Oh, oh this one? Oh, no, no, not the special one. Okay, anyway, the, in this surrogate model, we can use uh, machine learning to approximate the, each objective function. This is a very specific use of machine learning for surrogate model. And in, in this case, to create a new good solutions, first we need to create, find good training data. Here, we clearly show three points, improving three points. And then intuitively, it is very clear that we have a good solution around the pink region. So, but uh, it's very difficult to find good training, a sequence of solutions, good training data. So first step is to find a good training data. Then we can use some machine learning technique to generate next point, which will be better solution than the current solution. In this manner, we can use machine learning techniques. But this is very uh, rough idea, not very specific technique. And we will have a lot of techniques in this direction. This is a, I think that this is a future hot topic. Just the research just started now. I hope that I have answered the questions about how to use um, machine learning techniques for marriage objective optimization. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there is one more question in the chat box. Uh, it's, can we consider every deep learning model as a part of EMO algorithm? Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. No, 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 T totally different, huh? This MO algorithm and the deep learning is a totally different research field and different techniques. However, deep learning can use to improve the search ability of MO algorithm. This is one direction. This, these whole topics are based on that direction. Using deep learning or machine learning, we can improve the search ability of 
M algorithm. This is one very interesting research direction. And outside research direction, totally different, opposite research directions. I think that I have shown so far. Oh, this one. When we use evolutionary match objective algorithm for neural network architecture design, MO algorithm is used to find a good neural network. So now, <laughs> MO algorithm is used to improve the neural network in order to find good structure. In a standard neural architecture search, we use a single objective. So final result is only a single neural network architecture. However, if you use multi objective approach, you can find a wide variety of different architectures. Then you can choose the best architecture for your purpose. This is a, a totally different direction. One is uh, the neural network is used to help evolutionary multi object optimization. And in this figure, we show that the multi object optimization is used to help neural network. So different two directions, but we can use, yeah, we, we can, we have a two different directions. Neural network is used as a supporter, and in this figure, MO algorithm is used as a supporter for neural networks. I think that's, uh, this is the uh, answer to your question. Thank you. Thank you, Professor. Uh, thank you, Professor Hisao Ishibuchi, for your esteemed lecture. I would like to take this opportunity to thank IEEE for providing the knowledge sharing platform. I would like to extend my gratitude to the IEEE Pune section. Uh, I would like to thank IEEE CIS Pune chapter and my colleague office bearers uh, and members for your continuous support and help. I also take the opportunity to thank IEEE student branch at MIT ADT and uh, College of Engineering Technological University for making this event a grand success. I would also like to thank uh, COEP Technological University and MIT ADT for their support. At last but not least, I would like to thank all the participants for your patience listening. Uh, thank you everyone who has contributed directly or indirectly in this in organizing this event. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending my talk. And I'm very sorry for a lot of trouble during my presentation and also before presentation. I'm especially I'm very sorry for my misunderstanding about the time difference between yes. India and China. <laughs> It's our pleasure, sir, to have you uh, at our uh, distinguished lecture platform, and we would all uh, would be would love to be in touch with you for various uh, collaborations uh, in uh, computational intelligence domain. So please let us know for your further uh, programs or uh, webinars or lectures that you are carrying out. And please involve us in your uh, activities at your university also. We would be very pleased to uh, contribute and attain and participate in your future activities. Thank you, sir. I would be uh, personally uh, in touch with you for our further activities. Thank you, sir. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, on behalf of our chapter, I would like to extend my thanks to you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending my presentation. Thank you, sir. I will, I will keep in touch with you, sir. I will contact you for our further activities and uh, engagements. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.